Oh, you came the wrong way. I didn't look for you. She's been here for a while. Oh, you just sat out there. Well, you need to come in for lunch on a Thursday. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we... Happy Anna. 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 I was kind of trying to get to know the young lady from the university. Well, you're about to meet oh, yeah. her on um, the Thursday that you come in with all those photos and we record you. All right. So. Go. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. My name is Marvin Roger Anderson, and I am so happy that Rondo Avenue Incorporated and Halle Q. Brown, as the host again, is sponsoring this opportunity to have a discussion around the, the, with the descendants of the St. Paul uh, Union Depot Red Caps and other railroad workers. It's a conversation that is, I've been looking forward to for some time, and that's because I've had the opportunity to work with Blue Stream Blue Stem. Blue Stem. <laughs> Blue Stem Heritage Group. Blue Stem Heritage Group. And we have Nancy O'Brien here today and Sarah Yeager. And I'm going to ask them to describe the project that they've been working on with the Minnesota Transportation Museum. Got that right. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're here today with uh, two descendants of uh, Red Caps, and we expect several more to come in today and we're going to have this kind of a general conversation and if necessary some smaller conversations that will help build an exhibit at the Minnesota Transportation Museum that will reflect the mm -hmm. contributions made by African Americans to the railroad industry in Minnesota yes. as porters, waiters, red caps, cooks, brakemen, and Gandhi dancers, if we can find any left. <laughs> so I'm going to go around the room, and then when we get to you, would you say a little bit more about your project? Yeah. So why don't we start here, and then we'll go around and wind up with them. My name is Luana Holmes. I was just hired on last week to work on the archive slash photo project. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy to meet some of the people I've been reading about. You. Oh, good morning. My name is Gail Payne Foreman, and I'm here to talk about a wonderful gentleman, wonderful gentleman. Just happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. <clears throat> Debbie Montgomery, uh, Debbie Gilbert Montgomery. Um, I'm just here to talk about my red caps and the people that kept me going. <laughs> my name is Dawn Sully. I work with Halle Q. Brown Community Center, and I am here with these conversations and making sure that they keep going forward. I'm Catherine Squires. I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota, and I'm helping with the Halle Q. Brown archive slash photo <laughs> project, and I'm happy to have these stories be recorded and preserved. I'm Jonathan Palmer. I'm with Halle Q. Brown as well, um, and very excited this about these conversations. And a big fan of uh, Gail and Debbie and Marvin, of course. Uh, both of us Morehouse men, and this is some great history for all of us. Yeah. 
Let's do, come on over here. We want you to come right down. Well, you want you to You're just in time. Yes. <laughs> we were just getting started. We've all kind of gone around the room and we just introduced ourselves mm -hmm. and your connection to this conversation about the St. Paul Union Red Caps. <coughs> and then when we finish up with the introductions, we're going to hear from Sarah and Nancy about the project they're working on with the Minnesota Transportation Sarah. Museum. Sarah and here, here. Oh, good. We're good. Okay. It's, it always works like that. Okay, great. And so we'll introduce you two, and then we're just getting started. So, uh, I'm glad you can make it. <laughs> don't need one more. Now event. I saw your car. I said, oh, what is she going to say to me? <laughs> so we're going to wind up with Sarah and, and Nancy, uh, Naida, and they're going to tell us about their project at the Minnesota Transportation Museum. So, I'm Shirley Rawlings Hickman, mm -hmm. and my dad was a red cap all my life. That's mm -hmm. all I remember. Mm -hmm. Captain. Yes. 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 He was captain. I'm Linda Rawlings Denson, and um, I can re remember lots about being down with my dad, picking him up and, and all of that and the rides. Exactly, and? Naida Presley. Um, my grandfather was a red cap and I have several uncles that were also red caps. And I actually tried to get my mom to come because she probably knows more about mm -hmm. the story mm -hmm. than me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's on YouTube to get started and tell us a little bit about the project and then We'll just open it up for conversation. All right. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you all so much for coming, and thank you um, for hosting Holly Q and for putting together Marvin. So I'm Nancy O'Brien Wagner, and I'm a partner at Bluestem Heritage Group. We are a history consulting group, and we um, we just did the history of Central High School. We do exhibits. We do research projects, things like that. And we have been working with the Minnesota Transportation Museum, which is at the Jackson Street Roundhouse. And we hope you're familiar with it. It's the big roundhouse kind of near the hazardous materials recycling plant. <laughs> so, um, and it in the late 80s became a museum. And it's really been a collection of very large trains for a long time. And so they hired us, oh gosh, four years ago, five years ago, to do an interpretive plan, which is sort of the big philosophy mission statement for a museum. Like, what's the stories they want to tell? And at that point, we said to them, you know, the big car artifacts, I mean, those are interesting. And there's a lot to be told about the transition from diesel to coal, et cetera, et cetera. But really, the more interesting stories to the broader audience are the people stories. Mm -hmm. And the focus on the trains is great, but it's really what the trains brought mm -hmm. as ideas. Mm -hmm. And their, um, their role, I mean, James J. Hill is incredible. The, the settling of the American West, the connections, um, the building, the growth of, of, of wealth that came from the geography, but also the ideas. And in particular, we talked a lot about the African American um, sharing of ideas that were happening through the railroads and how this became the social movement. It was a social movement as well as this like, physical locomotion movement. So at that time, we said we, we need to really expand beyond the technology of the trains to talk about the people and the society and the questions that brings up. Like, yeah, that sounds great. What are we going to do with that? <laughs> we're like, how about an exhibit about Pullman Porters? Wouldn't that be great? <coughs> and Marvin and I were talking, and I learned that you had been doing the same thing, that you'd been researching this project. So I'm going to pass it over to Sarah. She'll talk about this one. So, right, so Nancy and Marvin kind of, you know, knew about this, you know, knew each other, worked on this together. I was the lead on, an, I have been the lead on a, um, the research project with, we're getting our funding for this work through the Minnesota Legacy Funding and they do things in pieces. So the first piece is the research. What is the research for? What is the Pullman story? Marvin came on as an advisor to the project um, and will continue on as a guest curator for the exhibit that we're working toward. Um, 
So, and he said, we got to have the red caps too. Mm -hmm. So we are, that's why, you know, we're looping in and, and, you know, we're telling the big story, like Nancy was saying, but we want to come down to the very local story. What was the impact in St. Yes. Paul mm -hmm. of these men and the work they did and the work ethic and, mm -hmm. and, you know, so we have, there were a series of eight to 10 um, oral interviews done 2003, 2004 that we had that were, that are at the Minnesota um, History Center archives. And we um, we want to add to that by talking to you and ta uh, hearing your stories and your family stories and and to incorporate that into the exhibit. Now, um, as I said, this is the first phase. The second phase is to create an exhibit plan, um, which will be, as it says, a plan. You know, this is the space we have. This is what we're going to say here and here, and these will be the. This is what we're going to say, and, and Marvin's going to be heavily involved in that. And then the third phase, we'll be actually constructing it. And we hope to get um, funding for those next two phases um, in the next year. So we're moving along, and um, I want to add that Marvin, the MTN has a new executive director, well, new about two and a half years so far. Marvin's met with him. He's really excited about this project, excited about um, meeting more people as well. So um, thank you all for being here. And, and your willingness to share your stories. Let me just add that it's it's an important that this is the Minnesota Transportation Museum for the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And as Nancy identified, it was trains and locomotives. And not this director, but the previous director, I had attempted to say, you cannot tell the, trans the railroad transportation story in Minnesota without the people. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about people, you have to talk about the porters, the waiters, the brakemen, the cooks, and the red caps mm. that started it all, who were St. Paul's first ambassadors. And I have to say he's been very <coughs> receptive. He seems, the board is very receptive. And they want to, start with the red caps but we don't want to end there we want to get the pullman we want to expand their pullman quarter exhibit we want to make sure that they have an exhibit for the waiters and i'm working maybe with stair or hopefully with the women that worked on the railroad there were some females that were on the railroad as uh, beauticians and babysitters and they sold and they did other duties and we have a couple of pictures that uh, we have and there was an exhibit at the Northwest African American Museum in Seattle Washington and they've done some research on the women who worked on the railroad and there were several here in St. Paul so we want to incorporate them as well Mm -hmm. So I'm spending my time, and I thank you for the time that you guys are giving us, because I think this will be a good effort. Since we don't have our own museum, we got to make sure that other museums reflect our contribution to the state yes. of Minnesota. Let's say yeah. <laughs> All right. So our conversation, do you want to ask some one questions? Thing. Yeah, go ahead. You talked about the women. There's very little published information in books, yeah. magazines, journals right. about women on the railroad. And uh, so to find that information is going to have to be through conversation. Right. And so if you know of anything or you, you know, we, that's a, a lead that we are having the most trouble with. And we would certainly like to include if we can. Are you all consulting with um, Alicia Volante and Yui Chonishi, who are working with model cities on this very work about women and men? Yeah, we had started to work with them, and it, it sounded like the directions were pretty different at that point. So, But they're on our radar. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to share our organization with um, some of the same people here at the table. We've done the first. St. Paul African American Historical Cultural Context Study mm -hmm. that through Legacy Dollars, too. I would like to share that, too. That's great. Right. That's you say we, do you mean Hallie Q. Brown? Not Hallie. Mm -hmm. um, they had uh, Jonathan, Debbie, Marvin. Okay. They were some of our steering committee members, advisors. We called them advisors. <laughs> but actually, the consultants that worked on that was the 106 group. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And okay. so we just got it approved through um, the Legacy Folk and the Minnesota Historical Society. Great. Right. And what was the focus of that report? It was on the, um, the African-American historical 
the, uh, the contributions. Uh, so it's pretty broad. It's the okay. contributions of African Americans have made to the city of St. Paul between 1837 and 1975. Yeah. Well, um, that'll be great. I'm glad to hear that's con has, has ended. Yeah. There's a report on there. Yeah, the report is done, so we can. Okay. And, yeah, and it's approved, yeah. so we can. Um, great. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And there is a chapter or a focus on the railroad mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like I said, it's broad. Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah. yeah so, there. but still, Helpful. it gives you. <laughs> it helps you give to give you a cultural context. Yeah. So we'll make a concerted effort at some point to see if there's any descendants of the women railroad workers. Yeah. Somehow mm -hmm. we'll have to yeah. find that out. I'm waiting to get the material from Seattle to see how they went about gathering the material. I have some pictures, and uh, but there, there's probably, or hopefully, there's a descendant or two here of a female uh, railroad worker. Mm. It would be nice to have their be. perspective Absolutely. as well. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. But we're here today to talk about the red caps, and there's there's refreshments there if you'd like. And it's now ten forty, and we thought we'd go for an hour. If if if, if somebody needs to leave early and they haven't got a chance to answer a question, uh, both Nancy and Sarah will will break off and allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. So I understand you have a few questions. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. then you can get started um, at this point. The most important question, and, and if maybe we could just go around the room and you could share, um, what was the? We want to talk about the impact on the community, on your community, on your life, on you. Um, kind of that's the base level, and then secondarily, a little more broad than that. You know, to talk about. We've talked to, to Marvin a lot about the impact of these men on their work, but also they had other businesses and the, and the steadiness of the work allowed them to become um, deeply involved in the community growth and leadership and so on. So those are the, the things and points we'd like to, to hear from. <laughs> Floor is open. The impact. It's a big question, I know. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think, um, um, first, we have to frame it up because, you, you know, kind of historically, you kind of think about why black folk came here in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, thinking about the Great Migration, it was because folk, of course, wanted jobs and came to the North for jobs. And then once folks settled here in this area, um, of course, if you look at it historically, it wasn't because maybe they chose to come here. It was because other family members came and said, um, there's employment, um, things like that. So, um, and I know that's why my uh, family came here. My uncle came first, um, and, I, and he, you know, had his other siblings come um, here as well. And so, and they, of course, settled in Rondo because, it, because they couldn't settle just anywhere. And, who, and when you come to a new place, people wanted to be together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with their own family, um, who helps, you know, support one another. But my grandfather, in particular, so I'll talk about him in particular, he was a certified electrician, but he could not get a job in mainstream as a certified electrician. So he did start his own business on Rondo. Well, actually, it was on Dale and Rondo. Um, but, you know, that wasn't enough to, to support the family, so then he actually got a job working on the railroad. So, of course, um, the railroad was, was a big employer of mm -hmm. uh, black folk here in um, St. Paul. So, as you can see, I can point out all my uncles um, who worked on the railroad, and they were all red caps. So, um, for them, it was a way to support family. Um, into you know to, to from that around that whole economics and um, employment. So I mean that's how I'll start. I think now. you have four, four, four oh, uncles. God. Let's see. One, and, two, and a, three. Who are they? Uh, I can point them over here. This is my grandfather Stanley. This is my uncle Irvin. My uncle Cecil. My uncle Ruben. My uncle Bishop. Bishop mm -hmm. is the first brother that gave yes. us. Yes. And my uh, surname was Neil, mm -hmm. N -E -A -L. so he was the first one that came here. And um, so, <laughs> I'll give 
there's a lot of my folk right there. Well, it's, one red cap married your uh, sister. Well, yeah, there. this is my um, in-law. This is Uncle Ruben. He actually married my brother's uh, sister. Mm -hmm. So he's actually, yeah, in-law. Uncle Ruben. And why would, why would um, someone seek to be a red cap rather than a quarter or the other around? Do you know? Is it sort of families <laughs> kind of went in a direction? I think so part of it might have been the travel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that as a red cap you were home each day home. with yeah. your family yeah. and yes. otherwise people mm -hmm. were traveling. It's gone. five days in and five, five days, days out. Right. Mm -hmm. Five days in, five days out. Mm -hmm. And there's no cell phone, there's mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. I mean you were gone mm -hmm. for five days. Mm -hmm. And that's a big strain on a family. Mm -hmm. to be gone for five days and all of the things that can happen to a family. So that was a very big strain on families. And your cooks and your waiters and your Pullman porters were gone. I mean, they left mm -hmm. at 3 in the morning mm -hmm. and they got back fifth day around 10 or 10.30 at night. They were tired the next day. Mm -hmm. They were grumpy the second day. <laughs> <laughs> they were drinking the third day. <laughs> They were, the drinking, they were drinking the third day because they knew they had to go back <laughs> home. Right? Yeah. So that was the pattern. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, they were seriously, there was some serious drinking in the community yeah. because they had to go back out to that car where there wasn't any heat, mm -hmm. there wasn't a mattress, mm -hmm. and it was an 18 hour day. Mm -hmm. So would Red Cap have been a more desirable job? Like, <laughs> you would people try night. to switch? Mm -hmm. That would, that would be what the only about thing. the income? Was there a much of an income difference there? That's a, you know that's a good question mm -hmm. because you know of course neither one paid very well, mm -hmm. but it kind of depends because um, as I heard the stories, it was the tips yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that really helped folk get you know mm -hmm. <laughs> pocket wise, mm -hmm. money wise was those tips. It wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. the salary, mm -hmm. so. Who's making more tips? Um, I would, you know, if I'm going to make a guess, uh, probably was the porters because they traveled, you know, the distance. Again, our red caps came home at the end of the, the day. So, you know, they, they got tips too, but probably not as many or as much as, you know, doing that long distance wow. traveling, I bet. This is so cool. I never thought about this angle. And that is an angle to yeah. research. <laughs> the, the red caps had the ability. They they started at a lower rate. We're talking maybe five to ten cents a bag, yeah, a dollar yes, an yes, hour. Yes. Yeah. Plus all of the work they did. You can see there they were doing everything they did at the everything. depot. The shoveling, the they were shoveling. They were the grass, cutting the grass. Right. They yes. were mopping. They were cleaning the spittoons, mm -hmm. cleaning the windows. Yes. I mean, they did everything at the depot for maybe a buck or so and five cents a bag, mm -hmm. which allowed them to become entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Many of them had second jobs. But how? what were their hours as red caps? Did they work a full shift as a red cap and then a full well, shift as a second? Sure, we could probably tell us yeah. what Mr. Rollins Our, our father worked, and I think all the red caps, mm -hmm. worked a regular eight-hour shift. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I always remember the bags were 25 cents tip. Because <laughs> when I go to the store, Daddy'd always put his tips up on the mm -hmm. chest, mm -hmm. and I'd get $3 usually in quarters <laughs> and go up to cup price and daily get whatever we would need. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know anything about his salary, but mm -hmm. I just remember. Yeah. It was the, very low. <laughs> probably. <laughs> very low. Yeah. And they would say that the tips, that was the advantage of being a red cap. You could yeah. get tips. Tips, yeah. And so the red caps had to be uh, intelligent because mm -hmm. the more you can make a traveler feel, the more information you can provide a visitor, the potential your tip is going to go up in addition and to the... Personal. And personable. And personable. That was the key. Mm -hmm. They had to be personable mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. somebody come. You remember at the, at the height, right around 1924, there were 200 trains coming into St. Paul every day. So that's people getting off the train and moving into the city of St. Paul. And even in the 40s, when the number was dropping, there were still 90 trains a day. Mm -hmm. 
So you're looking, and this is before roller bags. Yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> this is when they were carrying these, like, these Samson. I mean, when I went away to school in 58, I, I left with a steamer trunk. I was going to say the steamer yeah, trunk. Yeah, steamer trunk. Yeah. <laughs> and these were the gentlemen who got them. So you had mentioned, I think, that your grandfather was a, a red cat mm -hmm. and also an electrician. Mm -hmm. So did you have those jobs simultaneously? Yes, he did. So he did his little fixing shop wasn't open all the time. So it was open in between his hours of work. Okay, and would that would a, would it have been like a six day a week, five day a week? Well, for my grandfather and how he operated his shop was. Different. It wasn't okay. like yeah. like regular hours. <laughs> Would the red caps Would the red caps have been those five six days a week? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Those are regular. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are regular. So he would just work it in around in the, around there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And like you said, my my grandfather drank a lot. So who knows? What his you know his shop was probably closed more than it was open <laughs> to him because I know he was slow at I can remember something being really slow at fixing stuff. He was good at fixing it, but he was slow because he, he drank a lot too. So, yeah. There was a lot of drinking. A lot of drinking. <laughs> We're getting that. We're getting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, thank God my father stopped after a while. But yes. Yes. They, they all drank. And it was a it was a reality because mm -hmm. the working conditions were not were very not good. Well. Yeah, they were very deplorable. And how they were treated. I mean, just hearing the stories mm -hmm. from yes. other folk, how right. folk were treated. I mean, racism was alive and well um, during as that time. As if it's changed. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. Can I ask a question? I know that I'm kind of taking off from this, and we are at Alley. Me, I am learning all about the Red Caps and I'm learning about Rondo. And to me, what I would like to know from you guys, like, what are your first memories mm -hmm. of the train or your family members on the train? Like, what is your first memory? What makes you smile or what might make you cry? Mm -hmm. You know, because as I was reading the book, and, I, and please forgive me, I do not remember, was it George that they called all the gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Pullman Porters. Porters. That was the Pullman Porters. They called them all George. And I read that and I couldn't believe that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked. But what are some of your memories, your first memories of the train or something that makes you smile, makes you cry, Miss Montgomery? I know one of my favorite memories of you is getting to see Dr. Martin Luther King. I think that is, I repeat that story quite frequently. But what are some of your memories? If you don't mind me jumping in with this. Thank you. I well, smile when I think of it, and that's because my dad, I must have been probably 8 to 12 or 8 to seven to 12, but once a month, because they would get passes, my dad and I would go, just us, mm. uh, overnight, where we slept in the sleeper, go to Chicago, mm. go have breakfast at a place, I think it was, all I think of is Betsy's, Pancake House near the, station. near the station, mm. and then I got to choose which zoo I wanted to go to, because mm. there were two of them. Mm. We'd go to the zoo, and then be back on the train. Mm -hmm. um, the next day. So that's a great memory for me. And we did that often for several years. Mm -hmm. And she was the baby. Yeah. Yeah. She, was gone. Yeah. she was gone. That's why she didn't yes. get to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember when Daddy would take us down, bit my mm -hmm. sister in between us. Sometimes we just go down that, that elevator thing to where the trains were. And then when the steam would come out of those trains, oh, that was so scary to me. I hated to go down there. But I, I didn't like going down there. Yeah. It was a big hissing noise, wasn't oh, it? Oh, and it was yeah. so loud. Right. Oh, so loud. And I'm scary anyway. Yeah. <laughs> My father would bring home his tips wrapped in a napkin. Wow. So there would be a napkin for quarters, a napkin for dimes, and a napkin for nickels. Mm. And we'd have to take them out and count them. Mm. You know, it was five days we'd have all the tips <laughs> in a big napkin. And so yeah. I'm sure the porters Thank you. did some, the red caps did something like that as well, bring the, their money home. No, Daddy had a, a long leather. Uh, somebody, yeah. yeah. Mm. And different. each day, he'd just dump everything out yeah. on the. And the kids would, would 
take turns counting it. <laughs> I heard you say you <laughs> still have it. There will be stacks. And he would say, he would say you're, I'm missing 50 cents. So, <laughs> Archie took it. Can <laughs> 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 we get your memory on camera? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, my grandfather was one of the captains. I just got yeah, done when we moved, cleaned out the house, throwing his hat away. I no, for what you did. Well, I didn't throw it away. Oh. My kids threw it away. Oh. Oh. They had a cap. Okay, they, they emptied out everything. I we mean, have a cap. Oh. You know, you just get my cap from. I got the cap from the Rawlings. Thank you. <laughs> I, have, I have a red cap oh. from the Rawlings family. From their dad. So that's wow. the one that's going to the we museum. Need, we would yeah, love Yeah, that's the one that's going to the museum. Wow. They lent it on a permanent loan. It says Captain on it. Yeah, that's wow. nice. And it's a red cap, and it's going to go to the museum. That's awesome. Tell us about the. And it says donated by the family of God. So nice, Debbie. So anyway, my, my grandfather was in the end of the first uh, row over here. And um, he, I've got a picture of him, that I guess I should let somebody see. Me. <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting underneath the, the lilac bush in our backyard with a can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but he, he uh, was red cap. But my grandmother was matron in the bathrooms. Okay. And my mother worked mom. as matron in the bathrooms. Okay. So we and got tips did. all the way around mm -hmm. from okay. the bathroom and with my grandfather being a porter. Mm. And uh, I, I tell people all the time, you know, with everybody being down at the depot, we used to run through that whole depot. We knew every nick and cranny in the depot because <laughs> we were there so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I think the most memorable thing that happened, like they were saying, is the Red Caps got passes. My grandparents never used one pass. Oh, I used all of their passes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, one of the trips that I took on it was the trip that I went on the march on Washington in 63. And uh, my grandfather turned me over to one of the porters, and I can't remember. Gordy, Gordy, Gordy knew who it was. Mm -hmm. He turned me over to one of the porters and said, this is Gil's granddaughter, and she's mm -hmm. going to the March on Washington. Mm -hmm. And so they put me on the train, and the porters really take, took care of me. I was in the food car, so they fed me. You know, I was a kid, so I was eating all the way. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so they fed me all the way down to Chicago. And then when, I, when the train got to Chicago, um, they took me over to and introduced me to a porter in Chicago and said, this is Gail's granddaughter and she's going to the march on Washington. Hmm. So they, he put me on the train, once again in the dining car, because mm -hmm. uh, you didn't have seats, you know, I mean, it was just... Mm -hmm. So from Chicago to Baltimore, I'm on the train with the porters and I'm listening to their discussion while they're cleaning, cooking, doing mm -hmm. all of what they were doing. And then when the train got to Baltimore, uh, the porter that took me said, now you stay here till we get the train cleaned. And then I'm gonna take you on the bus to the mall. And so think about this today, <laughs> that you're taking a kid, <laughs> you know, yeah. across the country on a train unattended. Yeah, unattended. Well, they were attended because mm -hmm. to them, yeah. Yeah. that was family. Mm -hmm. And nothing was going to happen to me. I had not, although I was kind of wild anyway, so I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about anything happening to me. But he took me all the way over to the mall, and I can find myself at the back of the reflective pool as Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech and for that whole march. And then he told me before he left me, he said, now you take this bus back and told me where to go, and you're going to meet so-and-so and he's going to take you back across the country. Mm -hmm. And so I went all the way to the March on Washington on my grandfather's pass, mm -hmm. <laughs> being yes, shuttled yes. through mm -hmm. all of this with all the porters, people that I didn't know, but you'd have thought they were my father's or, mm -hmm. or caregiver all the way along the way. But mm -hmm. they knew your grandfather. They knew, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was just a, a phenomenal trip uh, to do that. I also took the train all the way down to Georgia on another march. I was marching all over the place. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. <laughs> and I remember pulling into the train station in, Chicago, in Georgia, um, and the train stopped. 
And so I was getting ready to get off the train, and they said, no, you don't get off here. I said, what do you mean? This is where they, I'm supposed to be. No, you don't get off here. And so I said, yeah, I'm ready, and the one young porter came, he said, don't come down here, cause us no problems now. Mm -hmm. Sit right here. Mm -hmm. And then the train mm -hmm. went outside of the station, and that's where they let the African American people. Oh, oh. Well, that happened to me. Yeah, when I went to that, 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 when I went to college, yeah. the same thing happened. Oh, they were dropped God. off, and uh, mm -hmm. they were we were dropped off, and the train goes oh, down, man. and then oh. but as soon as the train goes, you see the Morehouse College guys oh. over there standing, oh, and then you walk right. across the tracks oh. Oh. to get wow. to them. Wow. Yeah. And if, if it's, if, if, if it was raining, so you don't get to the station you want, and they just just come on. Mm. Because in that day, you had to let them know when you were coming, mm. so they would meet you, uh -huh. so you wouldn't go into the station mm -hmm. and get. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. This was part of the the in, in, indoctrination yeah. to the South. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Marvin, didn't you tell me that that started in St. Louis for you? I mean, once you well, once you got to St. Louis, we yeah, had segregated trains. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had to go to the uh, to the colored car. Oh they call it. Mm -hmm. That must have been a shock for you. Yeah. Well, well, you're pretty well aware of it, you know, know from knowing that you're going south. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, well aware of it. I was just. <laughs> I was told, you know, to what to expect. <laughs> you know, it was it was, the seg it was segregation. Yeah. 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 It was legal. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. permitted. Ooh. And we were when we got to the colored car, everybody was coming from different schools. You would trade stories and things, mm -hmm. and uh, it was strange. Sure, it's it's uh, it's something that you re you never forget. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You never forget it at all. That's why, man. Do you have a memory? The memories that I have of my father are getting was getting up at four thirty five a.m. <laughs> getting ready to go down to the station. And he never really talked about being a red cat. One story that he shared with us at the dinner table was about the disrespect. Mm -hmm. And that was for, well, my mother and father, my father and mother have five children, Dorothy Gale, Billy Gilbert. And my brother, Billy and Gilbert and I are stair steps. And so daddy was saying to the boys that he wanted them to do things that would not, um, that he, they would not have to work the kind of job that he worked. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the disrespect. My father is in the picture there, I always say, the handsome man. Tall <laughs> 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 gentleman in the back? Yes. <laughs> and Daddy was a, a soft-spoken. The pain, the uh, background, the men, I'm doing, we're doing a reunion, mm -hmm. a reunion here. And the men in the Payne family have very soft voices. Mm -hmm. And my father was six foot, maybe right under, maybe three, and a big man. In fact, I thought that he was a, the, the most biggest man I ever saw in my life, mm -hmm. and especially when I was being disrespectful and, and being naughty. <laughs> but that stuck with me. He said, I don't want you to be disrespected. He talked about being called a boy. Hey, boy. Mm -hmm. And for my father, this proud man, to be called that, but he humbled himself. And that's the thing that I want to say about the men. I know Mr. Rawlings, I know Naida, you know I know all your mm -hmm. people. And, but the humility that they had. When Roger read at the Red Cap, uh, when you dedicated that room, Roger read the job description, mm -hmm. and he read it, and he read it, and he read it, and then he said, now, <laughs> Who would turn to their wife and say, honey, I think I want that job. <laughs> but they worked diligently. Ooh. They were disrespected, but they knew who they had at home. They knew the bills were coming. They knew that's what they had to do, and they mm -hmm. did it. One of the things that I shared with the meeting that we had, I didn't know that I would be as emotional as I am or have been. Mm. But I remember the, my parents diligently working, and when the taxes on the house would come, be, and I'm going to pass a picture around. This is the only, this is the house that's left out of the two duplexes. Mom and Daddy owned the houses at 561, 563, 567, 560, 
five, six Carroll Avenue. This has been the house they moved. They moved this one. They protected it. They moved it way away when they tore down 561, 563, eminent domain. Yeah. And the thing that they would do is put the tax money in the savings then, and the 15th of May, the 15th of October, they would take the money out and pay the taxes. That's the diligence. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And for someone to come when your house is paid for, two duplexes paid for, mm -hmm. and give you $30,000 for a home, mm -hmm. that, that a, a beautiful duplex, mm -hmm. I would love to know what the people paid for that. That's over at 647, 649 Portland. Mm -hmm. I know my, I know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what you're talking about. And so I, that's all, but the memories, are good memories because they're honest and true. Mm. They, they, they are the, the strength that I have today that I'm instilling in my children, mm. my grandchildren, my four children, my four grandchildren, and I'm a great grandmother of identical twins. Mm. And so that's the legacy that I'm passing on yeah. to them. That's why I'm here today to talk yeah. about a gentleman. I'm talking about all of our fathers. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I don't wanna. They're being very, very modest, but if you ask each of these young women at this table, here's one of the most prominent neighborhood redevelopment specialists in this, in the state of Minnesota, who is, have done more for affordable housing as the executive director of a development association, who's the daughter of a red cap. Mm -hmm. Here's a PhD who's a daughter of a red cap, has a sister who holds a PhD yes. and is an, an instructor yes, at Howard University. At Howard University. Mm -hmm. Here is a, the first African American member of the St. Paul Police Force, mm -hmm. highest ranking, mm -hmm. uh, first member of the state patrol, city council person, and the recipient of the international Feder Police Federation Award for her outstanding service and went all the way to South Africa to, to get that award. Mm -hmm. Here's instructor, teachers, um, a whole family of, of, of educators and their grandkids. These are all descendants of red caps. Yes. <coughs> Men who worked for 25 cents a bag. Mm -hmm. So the what they were able to do and the core values they were able to transmit, you can see the result of it here and in and, and their children. So it just trickles down. It just that hard work, that determination is, it, that is reflected in those men has manifested itself in their children. And they've all done well, as many of us have done. Mm -hmm. who had that beginning at that transportation uh, industry in yes. St. Paul. Mm -hmm. That man there, Mr. Parker, he had like 14 kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And almost yes. all their kids are educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. A.B. Parker. Yeah, Mr. A.B. Parker. A. B. A. B. Parker. A. B. He educated 14 kids mm -hmm. off, of the, off of that, off of that 25 cents a bag. Yeah. So we're very proud of the St. Paul Red Caps, as we are of our porters and our waiters, as we are of our stockmen who worked at the, um, uh, uh, what is the name of that? Cuddy Packing House. Cuddy Packing, Packing House. <laughs> and we're proud of our maids and our butlers and our chauffeurs mm -hmm. and our bartenders. Yeah. All of them played a part in creating well, it had to be Rondo. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it was just the unique community of Rondo. And if we could say something about in Rondo. Well, I have an idea. Let me tell my story. Um, oh, okay. it's, it's similar. Actually, it's similar to Debbie's about traveling by yourself. Um, but one of the things, too, we had the run of the depot. So <laughs> just going back down there to get rededicated and it's been rehab. Man, talking about memories and going through the doors and stuff to the trains. Great. And then I just, just the traveling of my relatives um, from Chicago to here, my mother's sister 
um, when she's about 17 years old, my grandmother, um, my grandfather's wife then, she relocated to Chicago. And so they would travel back and forth a lot. And boy, did they have stories to tell on the, just traveling that train with all the people that they knew and how they partied, played cards, played dominoes, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. And then the trip, uh, one of my first trips to Chicago, I guess I was, I, I wasn't five yet, um, but I traveled by myself with the, the family of, because we were, you know, the men were such a family, they were so close-knit, they said Tabor, they said yes. Tabor's granddaughter yes. is <laughs> going to take a trip up to Chicago and she's going by herself, they'd like to send her by herself. And it wasn't nothing but a word. Mm -hmm. um, they told me who I was going to, who's going to meet me and who was going to put me on the train and then the rest of the guys uh, took care of me and I was like four, I wasn't even five yet. And I tell that story to my kids and how I'm like hovering over everybody. Don't go outside by yourself, stay. <laughs> don't you dare go down the street, <laughs> nowhere. But like Debbie said, you know, she was even older than me. I was like four. That's um, who traveled by myself with the guys. And um, when you traveled train. that way, were you sitting, where did you sit? Did I you? sat and you know, they had train cars. I was in the food car too, um, with the porters. But for the most part, I did actually have a seat okay. where I sat in the regular car. But when it was time to eat, they'd come and get me. If I needed to go to the bathroom, and they would check on me often. But I actually sat in the regular seat. Okay. But when it came time to eat, they came and got me to eat. Um, and they just took care of me and all. You know, and I love riding the train because I mm. have been traveling, I don't know, for a lot with my grandmother, my grandfather's wife, again that time, a lot. So traveling wasn't a big deal, but that was my first time by myself. And I wasn't Did even afraid. Know? I didn't even, like, no, think no. about it. <laughs> you know, just, I didn't even think about it because I, I wasn't shy either as a young kid. But it was, it was amazing. Um, and I tell that story to my, like I said, to my kids and my grandchildren, they just, they cannot <coughs> imagine it. Um, someone traveling you know, yeah. themselves and they mm -hmm. turned me over to my family when I got to Chicago. My Chicago, when I came back, they turned me over to the folk coming back and it was a dead deal. Um, yeah. I'm curious, and mm -hmm. I don't want to jump too, as a historian, you're trying to gather some information. You're trying to get a thesis in your head. And in my head, gosh, what, you know, what is it? And I know so many of you have been involved in, in activism and civil rights effort. Do you think that there was a, a model, a sort of practicality that you saw in these fathers and grandfathers of like sharing information and just making it happen? And do you feel like there's a legacy that went from from the trains and from those jobs into the community of just like, you just do it? Or am I stretching? Mm -hmm. Well, Marvin, Marvin actually kind of talked about that, and there's actually a dual role with that. Mm -hmm. What you have is the, the context within the African American community. These gentlemen served as the example, they set the standard, mm -hmm. they were doing so much for the community. Mm -hmm. But when you look at that also in the broader context of just America, we talk about this like it's Rondo history and it's mm -hmm. black history. It's American history. Mm -hmm. And the, the country did not work without these gentlemen. They, these were the people who made things happen, yes. but they were relegated to this position because of the way society was mm -hmm. and still is. Mm -hmm. And when you consider how much has come from that. As Marvin pointed out, just all of the advancement that has happened, the descendants that have gone on and done more, they have built up from this position that they were put in and the limitations that were put upon them, but to build so much. And when we look at the context of racism today and say African Americans are less, no. Look at how much has been done working within systemic racism working within systems that have been built to crush, push down, and otherwise oppress, and yet they have found a way. And they have not only found a way, they have made the future better, yes. but yes. white America could not exist without this. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at just the, the fabric of that, when you look at these descendants, and these are shoulders that I stand on, 
and, and being able to, to, to learn from them and be able to carry that forward. There is so much that, that is invested and built upon. You know, the, the misconception we have is black history begins with slavery and then sometime later Martin Luther King was born, mm. then Barack Obama's the president, and that's really all that happened. Yes, yes. And then you look at this and you can see 25 gentlemen just, just there in that yes. picture. Mm -hmm. And all of this that comes from that, there is so much that has not been written, there is so much that has not been told, there is so much that has not been placed in the context as the image of what African American culture and history is. This is one of the major missing pieces that the story needs to be told and people need to understand how much this built up America, not just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. African American America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and to go back to your question, um, the Rondo neighborhood was a village. Yes. And when, you, when these porters or red caps or the people that were on the trains, the information that they got on their runs mm -hmm. came back mm -hmm. to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. came back to, I was very active in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. and it came back to the ministers of the church who mm -hmm. put the message out. Mm -hmm. yeah, the church, they, it, it, at a time when people did go to church and, and got the, the word and got mm -hmm. the context of what was really happening, um, those are the things that came from these folks that worked on the railroad, and it was like, the vessel that sent the communication and the drum beat, the, drum the drum is coming back mm -hmm. and the beat is coming back to keep us updated mm -hmm. on what was really happening in other parts of the country. And they see it daily, you know, because they're going out right. and coming back in and going out and coming back in. Mm -hmm. And they also hear what's going on on the trains mm -hmm. as they're working. Mm -hmm. So that information is coming back and being and, and, and shared and and being uh, dis, you know, dis, uh, dispersed to the, to the people in the community. The piece I had, too, I lived across the street from this guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm telling you. I used to have to run her home. She was just like this. As a little <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God is right. She would be here. But right across the street from us and right behind the house that I lived in at 978 St. Anthony, <laughs> was the Chatsworth Inn. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the railroad people went and right. got their beer and told their stories and, and discussed the issues that were coming up. And it was always easy for me, I, I don't know how many other people did this, but while they were sitting there drinking, that I'd go in and say, is there anything you need from the store? And I'd get a tip to go across, <laughs> <laughs> to go across the street to the store. <laughs> Well, I'm getting whatever they want, I'm getting what I want. <laughs> there was always a method to my madness. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that was that was a big gathering yeah. spot. The, the, the one other, there's one other element about living in this St. Paul as a railroad community was the influx of college students yes, in the yes, summer. Yes. yes. That mm -hmm. I think all of us mm -hmm. would have encountered mm -hmm. at some point yes. a college student from one of the black colleges mm -hmm. that would come into St. Paul to work this summer and bring that knowledge to us. What? I, I'm yes. like, you're nodding, like, oh, this, I do not know this story. <laughs> so yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> We're talking about, they called them schoolboy waiters. Yeah. The schoolboy yep. waiters. Schoolboy waiters would come in. During the summer, mm -hmm. you got to be, St. Paul was the kickoff point for Yellowstone mm -hmm. National yep. Park. Yep. Yep and for the Puget Sound, yep. and all of those uh, parks out in Montana. Uh, so this, there would be so much traffic that the colleges would send up students, mm -hmm. and they would live in the community yep. in rooming houses, yes. and they were absorbed mm -hmm. by the community of Rondo. Mm -hmm. So they bought their knowledge, but then they yes. took Rondo knowledge so they brought new ideas, fresh ideas, mm -hmm. yeah. and then they became part of our community. Mm -hmm. Bill Wilson is a classic. I was trying. Bill Wilson oh, yes. is, is <laughs> one from Knoxville yeah, College. Yeah, Dr. Beverly Hawkins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they all came and stayed. Yeah. Many Dr. of them Dr. stayed. Yep. From model cities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. so that was a part of the. Yeah. That was a part of the growth of Rondo. Yeah. Yeah. So would they come year after year, like multiple summers? Yes. Yes. Jenny Kimes. And my, my father-in-law was a Pullman porter, 
but his son, Tommy, mm -hmm. Tom, mm -hmm. became, he worked summers like Roger summer, right, said. Yeah. And he was in school in Colorado and he became a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it was working yeah, yeah, on, the on the railroad. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was yeah. trying to work on the railroad every summer. Because the money for them was very good. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. it was it was enough money to pay your tuition and school. Yeah. Plus have a little extra money to maybe get a suit or a you know shirt, tie. Yeah. And so are you saying that the presence of those college students sort of raised the educational aspirations of the community? Oh absolutely. Absolutely, but I think that it started with the family. I think a lot of our families, mm -hmm. yeah. they knew what they had and where they had came from, and they knew what they, were, they didn't want their kids to have to go yeah. through. Okay. And so they saw was, education. There was, yeah. a, there was a high value on education, yes. and you know, when I look today and you think of kids that aren't in school, oh no, we were in school, That's right. you know, That's right. and the expectation is not only were we to be in school, that we were supposed to be successful in school. Yes. Yes. And when we came home from school and did our homework, yes. there was somebody that was checking it to make That's sure that it was done, and you didn't need to worry about getting a call from somebody yeah. to say that your, your child didn't turn in the homework or didn't show up to school or whatever that was. Rhonda was a hands-on community. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Not just hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about okay. hands-on. <laughs> okay. hands I mean hands-on. Hands-on. <laughs> <laughs> You've been fooling like around time. here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. One of the things that I remember so uniquely about being raised in my home there wasn't a boy uh, at activity or a girl activity. Yeah. My brother Billy washed the dishes, Gilbert wiped the dishes, Dorothy swept the floor. I mean, we did yeah, because we were all taught yep. that you could be whatever it was that God, the purpose that you were born for, you could achieve that. And that was all, every time there was difficulty, I remembered that, that I could achieve as, go as far <coughs> as I wanted to go. There was mm -hmm. nothing to stop me. And Jonathan, thank you for your comment. That was beautiful. I want to hear that again. I want to put it in the Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah, I'm loving all of this. Yeah, because yeah. actually, when you think when you think of Rondo um, mm -hmm. and the railroads, um, I I mean, our, uh, I love the way uh, Mr. McWatt <laughs> describes it. St. Paul is Little Harbor. Mm -hmm. So, Say that again. Little, little, little. Oh, Harlow, oh, his name was Arthur McWatt, he was an educator, yeah. writer, so yes, he wrote the book, uh, Crusader, mm -hmm. so give me the name, I forgot the name, but anyways, he, and he, in it he describes, because Marvin has a little blurb on it, mm -hmm. uh, St. Paul's Little Harlow, mm -hmm. so Rondo was an epicenter, um, and he became that because of the railroads and the information that um, was here, I mean, we think of the arts and the culture and the mm -hmm. folk that, you know, as it connects to the comments that Jonathan made mm -hmm. about the uh, formation of the Niagara mm -hmm. movement here mm -hmm. in St. Paul. Um, mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the civil rights, you know, Essie Hall, um, Frederick, Frank Boyd. Fre Frederick McGee, Frederick, Frederick McGee, McGee. Yeah. You Frank know, Boyd, he, he, yeah, uh, he's Gordon Boyd. Park. Yes. Yes. I mean, I guess you'd have to. Yes. We'd have to acknowledge that growing up in Rondo was something special mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. three, two and a half miles long and Dayton to Fuller. Mm -hmm. There was so much going on here that can, the labels were played a very good part of it because it provided a steady income. Yeah, not, not a whole lot of just steady. Yeah, just steady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red cap, that was steady income. Yeah. It might have been twenty-five dollars a week, but that's yeah. steady. Home ownership, high. High. <laughs> high. I don't, I don't even know to be people that did know their own. Faith, faith communities was, uh, was, was very, very strong. Faith, yeah. Yeah. the Bible schools, the, yes. yeah. the, uh, the whole entrepreneurial. Yes. I mean, your own business. Yes. High. When you talk uh, about the, the, the faith community, yes. I, I remember. You know, you, you talk about daycare today. Back in the day, the black churches, every week, one of the black churches in the summertime did Bible study. Yeah. Yes. And so we, did, now I grew up in the Episcopal Church. On one week, 
I'd be a pilgrim Bible study <laughs> where, where they would feed you, uh -huh. tell you about the Bible so you get a snack, and, and then every now and then if they had extra money, they'd take you on a field trip. Then the next week, St. James AME would yes. do it. Yes, the Bible study. And, and, then, and then the next week, Camphor would do it. And then the next week, St. Uh, Mount Olivet would do it. And then the next week, uh, St. Phelps would do it. And then we have the Bible picnic. Bible <laughs> I mean, because religion was a big part of it. But it was. Then we had the union picnic. <laughs> the union picnic. Yeah. Then we had the Bible school picnic. Yes. Yes. Going to church was a big it deal. It was. It was in the park school. Yes. As I union? Remember, the union? Union was at Como. No, 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 no. The union for the... Orders. For the waiters. Like that's a waiters. Was waiters. It separate yeah. 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 And that's a very uh, important historical point too about the unions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the porters union and um, for the railroad workers um, was actually really. I think it was um, started here that connected nationally. Um, around the unions mm -hmm. for a railroad workers, exactly. especially right. the African Americans. And remember, they had the their own credit union yes. down here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Credit Wood union. got, got yeah. killed. Yeah. They never found Royal out who Gooden. killed him. Killed him. Yeah. yeah. Never, never found out who, who, who was that? Royal, Royal Gooden got yeah. murdered in his in our credit in union. In the credit union, right. yeah. who was he? He was well. His they owned a grocery store oh, okay. on Agohart okay. and and uh, Chatsworth. Okay, that was my first job. Mm -hmm. uh, so that somebody actually trusted me. <laughs> Before we go forward, I asked them to come to eleven thirty today, ten to eleven thirty, and and it's getting close. I wanted to wind up, or you can stay, but I wanted to, you to know that they were here from. Ten to okay. eleven thirty. Yeah, I would jump to this question. I mean, uh, okay, these so are these. This is a huge, deep, a lot of stuff here. Important, right. significant, unique story, mm -hmm. and, and this is um, just wonderful. And I know we've only touched the tip of the iceberg <laughs> of the story. <laughs> yeah. uh, and this is an impossible question, but I'm going to ask anyway. If you were curating this, if you were trying to create an exhibit about one of these many angles that we talked about. What would you say? Don't keep, don't leave without putting this story in. Like, what are these stories? What are those things that you would want the future to know? I'm not a descendant of Rondo. I'm a young person. I want to know if I were to go to that museum. I want to know about the faith and the family and the man and the woman that were on those trains that made these families the way they are today in this community. I need to know that as a young person, I need to know their stories. Mm. I need to be able to hear it so that I can pass that story on as I've passed Debbie's story on many of times. I need to know that as a young person. I know the stories that you guys have, I just take them all in. But as a young person, I want to hear that that man had a family of six mm -hmm. and they went on to this education, they did this, mm -hmm. they, their children couldn't stop at this stop, they had to wait. And I think that we forget, St. Paul and I said this the other day, about the segregation was only so many years ago. So as a young person growing up, I need to hear that, even though I'm almost 50. I need to hear that story. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I would take my daughter there, I would take my nephews there and say, look what just happened here in St. Paul, and look what these men and women did for their families, the sacrifices. Because I actually took my grandson to the museum. Mm. Actually, they had... Santa Claus Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I did actually take him. We went through all the trains. But as we went through them, I was telling him, you know, the stories similar to what the. Uh, I forgot your name, I met or not. No more problem for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was telling. And for him to get really even more excited. So mm -hmm. the, the, he needed to know. I talked to him about the people mm -hmm. that did right. work. We right. need to know. I think we need to know about the people that did work there mm -hmm. and their connection to the success, going back to what Jonathan mm -hmm. talked about, mm -hmm. the success of the workings of the railroad mm -hmm. um, if, those, if our people had not been there doing those different jobs. Mm -hmm. So showing the different jobs, because I never even thought about the females. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that were so yeah. that were so important. He, he made a good point. Yeah. The females, I don't remember the name. Yeah, they were in the they were in the twenties and the thirties. 
And they were, they were, I would, well, I'll show you these pictures when I, I find them. They are, they are, there's like four pictures. And they have a uniform. Mm -hmm. And one is sewing. Wow, one is doing someone's hair. Wow. Okay. One is holding a baby. Ooh. Oh. And I think there's three pictures. And they show them in their roles. And then, oh, one's looking out the window with two little kids babysitting. Mm -hmm. And they're, wow. they're dressed. You know, and because I yeah I want my because I I use an example because he's read the story of uh, Mr. Freelix about the George yeah thing and then we've teach yeah. we our kids read that book and then they've written monologues so they perform these monologues in different places and Mr. Freelix's story is one of them and so when my grandson read it. He couldn't imagine working for 50 cents, mm. you know, yeah. and I told him this is what people did right. with that money. And then even his, I guess his wife, his, her job, she made 85 cents an hour. So she even back then, a female, made more money than he did working on the road. Yeah, good stories. So, so it's, you know, it's things like that. And just to, and that's what we're talking about, the legacy. Yes. Because um, I'll just talk about myself. I know I'm getting seasoned. I ain't gonna be here too much longer. But I want to just make sure the story is kept alive. Yes. yes. And there is a legacy in that there is some permanency. Mm -hmm. So when, because right now when we walk in our museums and they're getting better, our story is missing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that that's. Uh, a good focal point that we're part of the narrative. We're part of that greatness. Yes, mm -hmm. Each one of the people happened. sitting here, your family yeah. stories need mm -hmm. to be told. Your yeah. father's captain's hat needs to be told. The, the, one of the more important things is this idea that there's an ethic about work. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a dignity of work. Yeah. And it's not so much how much you make, mm -hmm. it's how you carry yourself. So mm -hmm. if, if they didn't have a railroad, I think some of those gentlemen would be just as happy in a Burger King, but they bring the dignity to it. Mm. If yes. they were whatever they were doing, they could take a dignity, mm -hmm. and that job wouldn't determine who they That's were. Right. Right. They had enough mm -hmm. from Rondo mm -hmm. and internal mm -hmm. strength to not let the job define them. Yeah. Yes. That's right. And when our kids have some of our kids are missing the day, is this idea that I don't want to work there. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to do this, but what are you doing now? Yeah, not doing anything. And, and, I, and to piggyback on that, I mean, what it brought with that job and those tips was strong families, mm -hmm. a strong faith community. Mm -hmm. I mean, the things that are the bedrock of what this country was built on mm -hmm. are all of those factors. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of those factors at some point are crumbling today. And how do we bring that back up That's right. so that our young people yes. can, can be, be as successful as yes. we were yes. and moving this yes. country forward? Yes. I just heard a statistic the other day. They, there were, uh, there's 2,100 Somali men at the Minneapolis airport. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 2,100. Working, you mean? Working there. Mm -hmm. 24 mm -hmm. hours a day. Mm -hmm. Now, they're, they're starting low, but you know, Moving up, that's 2,100 jobs that our young people could have, mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. It may not be this, but it's, they're following the same ethic that, that's there, that, that kind of the immigrant philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you start low, but then you move up. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so you do it for the next generation. Yes, you do it for right. the next generation. So 2,100 jobs is nothing to, 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 to mm -hmm. scope for. That's and a lot you, of and, people. And you can't get in a cab without a Somali driver on. Well, the reason that they raised it is if they decided to shut down and not work, the airport would shut down. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like these trains would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did, but, did you guys ever have problems like that? Did the trains ever shut down? Was there ever a disrupt? We there had a, there was a, there was a, there, there was, there's some literature about a strike. Mm -hmm. For wages, you know, to get higher, to go from to get seventy-five cents an hour on the train, mm -hmm. um, but there was never a strike. Mm -hmm. Okay, you lose your job on the Pullman Porter, mm -hmm. like that. Oh, maybe somebody else take your place. Mm -hmm. This is eleven thirty. I don't know. If you guys have any, you guys collected many artifacts yet? 
No. Not really. We're not really. Who got to take a picture? Okay. Would you before yes. anybody leave? Can and I was not going to hold this yeah. photo. This the is an older. Thing. Thing. If you want to leave, there's the context say? in the broader country. So again, oh, this is not African American. This, this is, is important. The things that made our country okay. work. That's oh, very too many people outside of the communities of color think I built this and I created this yep. and they did it all by themselves and they don't understand that without this there is no America there is no corporations there is no foundation for most of the things that happen in this country I think those are, those are you have a very good point yes. can I say one more thing you keep rushing me out of well, no, you you can stay <laughs> You can stay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we got an office for you here. We, 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 we open up the door. <laughs> but, the, but the other thing out of one of my travels was tracking the African American Underground Railroad up to the coast. And I got all the way up into Halifax, Nova Scotia, following it. And Henry Bishop has the Black Cultural Museum up there in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Really? And, and, and it's, he, what he did. For three summers, I went up there and spent a week going back and forth. And he showed me on the aqueducts that are up there and the creoles that came out of the south, out of Louisiana. Yeah. And, and then they, they came up. And with the Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman, if you look at where it came up, it came across Canada. And everywhere we went, Avon, uh, Canada, there's a statue of a black. A uh, guy who was the first <clears throat> person to get the Victorian Cross, and his statue was there. Mm -hmm. And then, as we came across Canada, and, and every time we went up there, he would send us further to mm -hmm. across. But the interesting thing, where the Underground Railroad came back into the United States, Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and there's actually a statue, a plaque mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. cool. So, it, I mean, and here's this guy in Canada that's tracking the Underground Railroad of uh, black folks. Falls all the way across, and Minnesota was a free state at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just something that I found out as I was trying to do my civil rights activity. <laughs> could, you, could, could you let us know what the next step is, where you're going to take this, so that they'll have an idea of whether or not yes, how this is going to play so, out? Yes, absolutely. So it was the research we're gathering, gathering, sort of discovering where some of these juicy stories might lie. And then, as I said, the next step is sort of identifying the thesis. and. You know, throwing out there, it's going to be a little bit of what was the job like? How did it impact the in, in industry itself? How did that impact the economics of it? I think that's an angle. But also, how did these men affect their communities? And mm -hmm. what are the emotional and mm -hmm. significant stories that we want to tell? Yeah. And so then, we'll start to outline it okay. and work with Marvin, and then Something. we'll come back to and get more of the And I can share this at some point yeah. with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, we would love to have you as advisors. Is, 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 is everyone, does everyone, is everyone interested point. in telling you know, their family story told? I mean, and is anyone not want really their names or families used? Really definitely don't want to yeah. proceed yeah. in that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, and I want to take a photo. I want to be in front of that. I want to take a now, I like to take Where a picture. Like a I like to take a picture over here from all of you guys yeah, with, the, with the red cap thing, and then uh, I know Naida, thank you for staying much longer than. Uh, you had. Oh no! In fact, they had carved out till twelve. Good. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for thank coming. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yes. Thank you for coming. It's good. <laughs> Where do you want us to go? We're going to go in front of the, the, the red cap. Yeah, we can sketch the photo. Okay. Oh, yeah. Put that one here. That would be great. We had a good time with that. Oh, man. We had a great time. We had a great time. Yes. So, yes. 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 You got it. You got it. I'm just kidding. I'm nice things.
Yes. I don't want to get Adrian. But we should go.